Hi Cactuses and Felt Shakers, Bex here. So today I'm going to be going over the top three Rift Watcher cards you lot should upgrade. Because you know, Chaos Legion's is over, so you're probably done with that now. But if you're not, go and watch Zard's video above of which ones he thinks you should upgrade. So, let's get into it with the top three Rift Watcher cards. So we're going to start off strong with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Junker. When you first get him at 1 BCX, he already has a reach ability, which is quite good for a neutral card. Then as you level him up, he gets the shield repair, which is what we all actually care about. So the reason Junker is at number 3 spot is because he's just universal for all splinters. He works really well with Kellia, who gives everybody plus one shield, so there's something for him to repair there. And also Grandmaster Ray, who also gives his team plus one shield. And as Light does have a lot of shielded characters as it is, there is always something for him to repair when working with either of them. But that's not excluding Green, who also has some monsters that do give you shields like Green Celia. But as well as the summoners, he works really well with Longtail and keeping her alive. Because she has the magic void, that means range, magic, archery, melee, everything has to go and attack her shields before they can touch her health. Now because none of the other cards are being touched when Longtail's around, unless they have Scattershot, He's always going to be keep doing that shield repair for her, making sure she takes as little damage to her health as possible and just keeping her alive. Now by having a reach card that has 4 damage and 4 speed as well as repairing the shields, it's very rare and can make it a really good card and universal for using it in certain rule types. The rule types Junker works really well with is plus 2 shields because obviously more shields, more stuff for him to repair, still attacking other monsters on the enemy's team, what's not to love about that. He's also really good in weak magic and also melee only and also lost magic. All of these are really good for him because they all have to hit shields at the end of the day. So because everyone has to hit whoever you're using shield, because let's be honest, you're going to use a tank for shields. You're not going to use one without a shield unless you're not allowed to do that. So why else wouldn't you pick Junker? He keeps the shield going, he's attacking people, he's making sure that the whole team is getting its shield repair, not just the tank. And he's doing full damage to people. What's not to love? Well here are some things not to love. Sorry to burst your bubble. But he's really bad because you can't play with him in no neutral monsters. So. You're going to have to go with a different shield repair if you want to do that, if you want to go with the long tail strategy or not, but you just can't play him, so we're adding that to the bad list. No shield is also a bad rule type for him, because although he can still do his damage, he can't do his main purpose, which is repairing shields. And also back to basics. Now let's just ignore the not being able to repair the shields right now, because I think I said that enough. But because he's a reach card with melee, he still can't even attack until he goes to first position. So that's not really a card you're going to put in unless you're going to make him a tank. But why would you do that? You're just going to lose if you make Junker a tank. But yeah, let's see who's at number two. Now the card that has taken the second position in my top three picks is the cute little pixie that just looks like Tinkerbell. Brandy Pixie. Now the reason I put her in number 2 is because at 1 BCX she has the reach ability which is pretty good for a green card I must say and then as you level her up later down the line she also gets self healing. Now it's not bad even if you get her at max for 10 health, 5 damage and 4 speed but let's see what else she's good at. Now what's really good with Pixie is that she is a reach card like I did just say for the green splinter 
which is really good because apart from the untamed card which has melee and a bit of magic it doesn't have any other reaches so once that card goes to wild your next best bet would be pixie now as she is a melee card she is really good for the melee only rule set so if you did want to use my law while you still can you do have options of other cards that will be attacking than just having 90 percent of your board sitting there chilling waiting for their turn to get into first position now another great thing is that because she is seven mana you can put out five damage to the other team which is quite good as not many melee cards in green can put out that much damage i mean you've got grud but he does double tap you've got the pelicor but i mean i don't think it is as much as five so it is that little bit extra that she does give to the green team and she is quite quick as well so for a slow splinter she does have that edge she does also work really well with the whole green team because most of it is like you know some form of healing so you've got the triage you've got the front heal you've got Kron which is also self healing but usually higher up levels you put them at the back you do have something good in your second position so your tank your back tank and your second position is still having all that healing while you've got Queen Micellia healing everybody else around her so she is quite good in that rest respect however she does come with cons just like everyone else in this game the main one once she gets afflicted that is it game over she can die that's it really you can't you can't heal someone that's not allowed to be healed so although she had that many lives other monsters can now just attack her and by the time she gets into first position she's probably not gonna have enough health left to do the attack she needs to do so that's one bad thing for her and also for seven mana as well that is quite a lot of mana to use for a green team yes you might use the goblin psychic which is six but you don't usually use high mana cards maybe your main tank maybe cron if you're using cron but everyone else in between you're kind of looking at between two possibly four mana spread it all across get enough damage on the board so you do have to be quite committed to throwing a big seven now some of the good raw types she's really good in melee only she can help grud out you know he's doing two damage to the other monsters team she's coming in swiping in hitting them again for five it's kind of a no-brainer that you do want to have her in there she can also help the pelical mercenary or even the micellic infantry which are also putting out quite high damage especially with the micellic infantry who has giant killer so if you've got i don't know a uriel micellic is going to hit it for quite a lot of damage and then pixie's going to come along and also add to that damage as well so you are giving them a big damage hit already before they may even be able to play she's also really good in common and rares only because she is only a common card you can still put out a lot of damage in the green sector with her because she can actually be played unlike some other cards who you may rely on a bit more when that is not a restriction another good thing she's with is what doesn't kill you which is also what many of us know as a rage because she puts out so much damage already once someone hits her before she heals let's say well we have to say she can do more damage to them so more damage more speed which means other monsters may not be able to get her anymore and then she just heals herself back up pops you in the face again five really good in that type of rule set but she's not perfect she's not good in back to basics you know she's a melee card and she can't reach and she can't heal she's just chilling there in second position just waiting for her turn you need her as a tank in that position as she does have the 10 lives but it's not guaranteed she's going to survive reverse speed she is okay in 
but she is still quite speedy so depending on who your enemy plays she is gonna be not the best pick earthquake as well she's not good in the earthquake realm seeing as she doesn't have any wings so when a melee monster gets hit in earthquake they lose two health if she hits that two health it's not guaranteed that she would be healing before she gets hit again so she could be sitting there on four earthquake comes along knocks it out for two and then another monster hits her she's automatically dead she may not even make, make it to first position let alone even getting herself healed i would personally say she's an eight out of ten now it wouldn't be a tier list from us if there wasn't an honorable mention and my honourable mention has to go to the coolest girl in the water, the water caller. Everyone who knows me knows I was chasing this car for ages, trying to get her to level 5. And you just got to admit, she is a really good Rift Watcher car. When you get her at her 1BCX, she automatically has stun. Now, the only other blue card that has stun at the moment is Igor. But you've got to level him up to level 4 or 5 to get that. Whereas Water Cooler, she instantly has it. What more could you not want from that? The further down you go, she gets the Reflection Shield. Which means she's now protected from Blast, Magic Reflect, all of that good stuff. And it's only level 5. So once you get to level 5, do you really need any more? But let's see why else she is my honourable mention out of all the cards in the Rift Watches. So as previously just mentioned, the Water Cooler is a good card because she's only 5 mana and she has the Reflection Shield and she also has Stun. Now there's not many magic cards that does have the Stun ability. The only one I can think of is the Revealer in Death, so that does kind of bring an edge to the Water Team. If you play her with um, Igor as well, you two can like dominate the opponent team by stunning them with well, 50% chance of stunning them constantly. So if you're playing someone that has a last stand or a self-healing character, the more you stun them, the more they're not going to be able to heal, which means the more chances you have of winning the game. She's also one of the only cards that you can put in the back line that does protect themselves from any blast damage and can also still attack the front or anyone else in the other team depending on your rule set. So she can go really well with Wraith Brood who you may have at the back instead of putting him at the front now and using the Tide Fighter. But you know, in a blast game, you really do want to use both the Water Caller and the Tide Fighter. I would have Tide Fighter in second position because he has the reach and the water cooler in the second to back position, hired in your taunt possibly, just so you know you're not getting damage into the middle of your team, only the front two. Maybe throwing a healer somewhere, back or front, depending what you feel, but that's not the topic of this type of conversation right now. So all in all, put the tie biter and the water cooler together. You've kind of got a formidable team. Obviously, if someone's playing Scatter, you're going to be screwed anyway. But let's just hope that doesn't show up. So, one of the cons for the Water Caller is that she can't take substantial damage. So, if you've got people with magic flying at her and then you've got an earthquake rule set mixed with a poison rule set, seven lives isn't going to last very long. So hopefully she can get out what you need to get out to throw her little damage around. But other than that, she may not survive very hard, very long either. And another big factor you do have to remember, stun is not 100%. It's a 50% chance of being hit. So if you've got like a really good rule set for stun, you've got to make sure that you have more than one option at the end of the day. Because you're not guaranteed to hit it. And that is including in the heavy hit of raw set. So, you know, if she does end up hitting someone with her stun, another monster can come along and do double damage. Brilliant. But if she misses, single amount of damage. Just your usual amount. 
She's also quite good, well, very good, in Blast, Magic, Reflect rule sets. Because both of these allow her to absorb the um, damage being done to her from either side or from her own magic that's being reflected back to her. So because she's not getting hurt from any of these things, she is able to survive just that little bit longer and put out her own personal damage to the team. So what is she not good at? The only thing I could think of was Lost Magic. Why? Because you can't play her. There's nothing else that generally makes me go, oh, shouldn't play Water Cooler. Apart from, you know, the standard, she's old mana so you can't play her in even. That's pretty much it. She's an all-rounder for blue. She helps the team. She's a very good team player. She's also quite good, you know, throwing her bits about letting everyone else get the final kill. So I'd personally rate her 900 out of 10. Everyone else will probably disagree with me with that. They'll probably say six and a half. But we're going to stick with the 900 because that is my girl, the water cooler. Now, if you made it this far, congratulations. We are now at our number one pick, which had to be no other than the best dragon card there is currently. Ego long tail. Now, why have I made long tail my number one pick? Well, let's start. One BCX, flying, taunt, and void armor. So not only is people going to be missing you a lot more because you're flying, dotting around, you also have the void armor. So any form of magic that wants to touch you, they have to touch your shield first, which is why at the beginning of the video, I said Junker was a good pick to go with Longtail because he can constantly regen those shields for her and just, you know, keep her alive. Now, once you get her to level three, she starts healing herself. We all love a bit of self-healing, and especially on a taunt, and especially on someone that has to have their shields hit first. But enough about that, let's go into more detail. Now, Longtail is the ultimate taunt, and it's so hard to get around her. Yes, okay, I know I keep saying her, but if you guys do read the lore, Longtail is actually a girl. I double checked. But, I mean, once you kill her, you think, great, Longtail's dead. But if you've got her with Osher or Adelaide, I mean, she's going to be resurrected. So you've got to do that all over again. First try get through her shields, then try get through her life. And by the time you got through her shields, her lives are already back up to at least 10. So you've got that whole problem all over again. By the time you finally got through her again, your team is probably half dead. She's just an amazing taunt card that does so much damage as well, especially how she does three magic and also three melee. Not many taunt cards have two abilities. But another thing that is amazing from her is that she goes well with so many creatures. We've mentioned Junker, we've mentioned Osher, we've mentioned Adelaide. You know, she also goes really well with the High Priest who also will resurrect her there as well. If you have her at the back, you can use um, the light card that does back row healing. She's worth about seven mana as well, but that's another way to keep her alive if you wanted to. If you also had her at the back, you can use Chant, the summoner, the light summoner, replacing shields, also gives people lives. I mean, there is just so many ways you can keep this one card alive. Anyone who can beat a long tail team, hats off to you. And plus, as she has tank hill, once you hit level three with her, the main thing you need to focus on is getting her shields replaced. So, you know, anything that can replace shields, Junker, a summoner, the um, three scavenger hireling, they just make it so much harder for the opponent's team to try and kill her. Because there's no way they're going to get through their shields more than once. And while they're all trying to bring her down, you're just there throwing your little bullets around, your magic, your range, your snipes, your snares, anything you can just to get as much damage on the opponent's board. So by the time Longtail is dead, you've probably got about two monsters to kill left. 
which is so good. And also as she self heals, not only is she helping the team by keeping herself alive, but even if you did have another tank healer on the team as well, that's two forms of healing, which makes her even harder to kill unless the opponent team has some form of affliction. However, there are some cons to this amazing card. She's quite slow. So anything like the Kabbalist or the Runic Skyclaw, they can get to her pretty easy, especially how they both have Giant Killer. And we all know Giant Killer can be a pain because that's double damage because you decided to play a 10 mana or more monster. She is very high mana as well. 15 is a lot. So you're looking at playing her in a 50, 60 mana game plus really. And your team has to be long tail and everything has to work around her. You can't fill out your team and be like, oh, I've got 15 mana left. Let's throw in a long tail because you will lose. Your team has to focus around her, not her focusing around your team. And some good things she's good at though, I mean not everything is a negative in this world. Earthquake, she's brilliant at Earthquake, why? Because she is a flying card. So while your opponent's team may be taking damage from the Earthquake in, she is still alive, fit, healthy, ready to fight. She's also good in equal opportunity, so let's say you did have her at the back rather than the front. She can attack someone else at the back. She doesn't have to hit the front monster. It's just the person that has the lowest health. And also, there's not a chance that they will hit her. But I know, she is a taunt though, so there is still that possibility. Another good rule set that she does in is get your wands out. Because her first ability is magic, she does qualify for that rule set. So, you know, not only are you doing free magic damage to someone, you can also throw in that bit of melee just to rub salt in that wound. I mean, there are some things that she's not good at as well. Like, you do not want to play her in a fury game because everyone gets fury. So, when they hit a taunt, that is more damage for your long tail, which means they get better, they can kill you a lot quicker. Stay away from taunts in this rule set. Also, keep your distance. That's not something for her. Now, I know we'll get your wands out. It's meant to be magic monsters. So why can you play long tail? Because you can play two forms of um, attacking and get your wands out. But in keep your distance, they even state monsters with two types of attack, which include melee, cannot be used. So it has to be just a single attacking monster so long tail can't be used even if you've got 60 70 99 mana and you can make the perfect team and keep it alive as long as long tail's in there she can't be used because she's got two sets of um, abilities so she does kind of lose that rule set and also unprotected the main thing about long tail and what makes her such a good card is her shields because everybody has to hit that first so magic range melee everyone has to hit her shields by not having the shields there it makes her a lot more vulnerable and having an unprotected rule set with a long tail in it is 50 50 you could still possibly win but you do kind of rely on those shields from her just to make sure she takes as little health damage as possible so i would personally rate long tail a good solid 10 out of 10. So let me know your thoughts on what you think of the tier list and also if there's anybody you would change, anybody you would add, anybody you'll move around with. But stay subscribed, like, comment, let us know your thoughts and we'll see you next time. Bye!